Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Clements, president of American Promise, and welcome to this month's American Promise Connect. We're really excited about tonight's conversation. We just have some terrific guests um, and, uh, and terrific work to do in this country, in this world, and nobody uh, knows that more than the social workers of America, uh, all 700,000 of them. Uh, including my daughter. Uh, so I know the heroic work that social workers are doing in just about every community in America. And it's hard to imagine where we'd be in this country without them. So this is a great honor uh, and and uh, an inspiration to be here with some of the leaders of the social workers in this country. And, and, and therefore, I would say leaders of uh, this country in many ways at a time when the people need to step up all of us to be leaders more than ever. Uh, let me tell you a bit about American Promise first and, and uh, welcome. American Promise Connect is a monthly conversation with leaders of all different walks of life. And we bring together folks who are new to American Promise in our work uh, with people who've been uh, working as volunteers and doing the big, the big work we are called to do. And we are doing one of the hardest civic things in American life, and that is winning a constitutional amendment. Yeah, we're not going to rely on the Supreme Court. Um, we know that's not necessarily the best strategy to preserve our freedoms and our constitutional rights. Um, the court has its role, but ultimately, so much of this democracy, so much of justice has been done when Americans step up to do amendments to the Constitution to make the constitution work for we, the people, as it was intended to do. That's how women got the right to vote. It's why we elect senators. It's how we ended the poll tax. It's why 18, 19, 20 year olds vote. None of those things would have happened without amendments to the United States constitution driven by we, the people. That's what American Promise is doing. Our For Our Freedom Amendment stops the big money corruption, allows we, the people, to protect our voice, to protect our elections, to enable every vote to count. One person, one vote, not one dollar, one vote. It doesn't matter how much you have in America, we're equal citizens and everyone's voice should be heard at the ballot box. It's gonna take a constitutional amendment to get it done. Uh, the Supreme Court has said, we the people do not have the right to stop billionaires, even foreign countries from spending money to influence the outcome of our elections. That's wrong. Money is not free speech. Money is power. Free speech comes from human beings expressing our views, including at the ballot box. So we need to defend that before our Freedom Amendment gets it done. American Promise is leading that effort. And we invite every American uh, to help in this effort. We need every American to help in this effort. We don't care who you voted for, what party you're in, if you're for freedom and democracy, uh, you have a place in this work. Um, there's a lot of disagreements about how to protect freedom and democracy. We won't all agree. There's some deep divides in this country. Um, that makes our work all the more important and challenging. Um, you, here at American Promise, we work together, even though we have many different views on many different issues. So what social workers do every single day. Uh, they don't ask when they're stepping up to empower someone to work with veterans, to work with uh, oppressed populations to work in schools. They don't say, ask how you voted or, or what party you're in. They get the job done to help Americans have the full power and freedom that every human being deserves. And so we're going to dive right in uh, to that. And my uh, colleague at American Promise, a guest you'll hear more, and I'll give her more of an introduction, Dr. Jessica Hare, uh, came to us from social work and said, you don't know it, but you're doing social work. And I didn't know it, uh, but I think she's right in a lot of ways. And we're gonna find out more about what she means by that starting right now. So I wanna thank our wonderful sponsors for tonight's conversation. The National Association of Social Workers, check it out, socialworkers.org. The Congressional Research Institute for Social Work and Policy, that's crispinc.org the National Association of Social Workers of Vermont, National Association of Social Workers of New Hampshire, state chapters of National Association of Social Workers and local chapters all over this country. Welcome to all of you and thank you for joining us. So 
let me introduce our wonderful panelists, and then we're going to get right into it. Sarah Butts is the Director of Public Policy at the National Association of Social Workers, headquartered in Washington, D.C. The National Association of Social Workers is the largest social work organization in the nation, representing the interests of over 700,000 social workers nationwide, as I said, chapters across the country. And Sarah is responsible for leading the association's public policy, political and legislative affairs agenda, overseeing field organization, working at the national level, at the, at the chapter level, political candidates, fundraising and endorsement efforts, as well as developing and advancing the association's strategic goals of influencing the elected branches. And you may ask, what are social workers doing um, trying to have advocacy in Congress and state houses? Well, you're in the right place to learn more about political social work and why the country needs that. And indeed, I uh, was um, impressed to see it's actually part of the code of ethics of social workers to serve the larger community and the nation in that way. Dr. Charles E. Lewis, a director of Congressional Research Institute for Social Work and Policy. During his time on Capitol Hill, he served as deputy chief of staff and communications director for former Congressman Adolphus Ed Towns. And he was instrumental in creating the Congressional Social Work Caucus with the idea that that would be a platform to allow social workers to have more of a voice in Congress and while on Capitol Hill for the Social Work Caucus as staff coordinator, Dr. Lewis organized briefings for the National Association of Social Work, Council on Social Work Education, Society of Social Work and Research before founding CRISP um, in 2012. Uh, CRISP has now brought uh, hundreds annually of social work students and social workers to Capitol Hill to advocate for his. Uh, highly praised and well-recognized efforts in public um, affairs and, and public advocacy, as well as social work. He was inducted as a fellow in the American Academy of Social Work and Welfare. And, uh, and I would say, um, uh, I'm not sure he would say yet, but I'm very proud to say uh, um, uh, the high honor of serving on the American Promise National Advisory Council, uh, are one of our new members with uh, amazing leaders. Uh, you can check them out on our website uh, at, at the AmericanPromise.net and see some of the great leaders. And we are so proud to have Dr. Lewis among them. So thank you, sir, for that. Let me introduce my friends, my colleague, a leader at American Promise, Dr. Jessica Hare. She's the Vice President of Outreach at American Promise. She received her doctorate at social work degree from the University of Southern California. As Vice President of Outreach, Dr. Jessica brings a new and powerful voice to American Promise's external message and our invitation to all Americans to join this great effort. She has over 15 years of professional social work experience ranging from child welfare, military social work, medical social work, school social work. And she has served as a member of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women and the National Association of Social Workers in the Georgia chapter and is a member of the Political Action for Candidate Election Committee. She uses her social work knowledge and skills to stand against social injustice while empowering not only oppressed populations, but all populations. Uh, who need that empowering now more than ever. In her downtime, she enjoys exercising, traveling, and spending quality time with her children, Morgan, and her twins, Nicholas and Megan. Dr. Jessica, Dr. Lewis, Sarah Butts, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let's dive in right now, and I want to ask Sarah Butts, uh, our, our National Association of Social Workers, and a uh, a leader in this space. Tell us what's going on from your perspective. Tell us what the National Association is doing. Tell us what brought you to this call tonight, if you would, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. I, as uh, I was introduced, I, I am the National Policy Director at NESW in Washington, D.C. We have 55 local chapters of NESW, one in each of uh, the 50 states. Um, and it, in my office, we are predominantly focused on advocacy with Congress, the federal agencies and the administration. Um, 
and our chapters are busy working and lobbying at state houses on issues that regard our workforce, that 700,000 uh, group of social workers across the country uh, who are working in so many different settings. They've been essential on the front lines of the pandemic in hospitals and public child welfare, um, working in schools and community health clinics and private practice, serving um, really vulnerable clients in Medicare and Medicaid as clinicians. Um, in integrated care teams. I mean, I have the teams that we work in libraries, the list could just go on and on and on. And we have a different scope of practice in each of these settings. Um, that said, we have a mission to help underserved people, to help them to meet their um, basic human needs, to make sure that we're fighting for equity and justice. Um, and at a time when we, when we, we have a really, um, we're struggling with the social safety net in the country, uh, social work um, and working for, um, for social justice is just essential. So that is the work of our great profession. We also do a ton of advocacy for our clients in the betterment of society and to help to translate social work research uh, to policy and practice. There really isn't an issue that social workers don't care about uh, if it regards um, the health and well-being and viability of our society. And our uh, policy priorities are outlined in a, a 2021 blueprint of federal social policy priorities document. It's over 40 pages long, and it's organized using the profession's grand challenges for social work. These are really kind of ambitious um, um, agenda to address some of society's most vexing social problems. And Dr. Lewis, who has joined us today, has really helped to serve as a leader in that initiative. Um, why are we here today? We're here because we want to have impacts. We want to have a stronger society. Uh, it's just amazing that when you're working in Washington, D.C., uh, trying to get policies passed that help average uh, Americans and their families, that we have to, be, to lobby aside big interests like oil and gas um, um, and these industries. I mean, we're literally advocating for the homeless population, for example, and um, it is very difficult to compete. At the association, I just want to mention that we do have a PAC, and that falls in our policy portfolio at NESW National. We also have 43 PACs in our state chapters. But even so, it's very hard for us to compete with this, um, with the big money or the dark money. And um, there is money in politics, and, and that's part of why I'm here today to participate in this panel. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I don't know if you did what a recent PAC operator did, which was write himself a check for $125 million to go into that, what they now call super PACs. And it's amazing how many actually strong, politically influential organizations are actually saying, we don't even have much of a voice anymore. Um, and so it's just a completely out of control system. So Thank you for being here to be part of a constitutional solution. Um, and let me bring Dr. Lewis in, who knows Capitol Hill well. I'm sure you've seen changes over the years, uh, Dr. Lewis, and how Capitol Hill operates in this new money system we have. But tell us about um, your work at the Congressional, um, uh, and we, I keep wanting to say CRISP, but of course it's the C Congressional Research and uh, uh, Social Work Policy uh, group. So tell us uh, the full name more clearly than I just did and the mission uh, that you are doing. And, uh, and, and what, and, and if you would, what's, what's the atmosphere on Capitol Hill? How can, um, what brought you to this an American promise? And um, uh, what's your, how, what you're seeing out there? Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Uh, thank you for inviting me, Jeff. Uh, before I get started, I, I want to say that uh, <clears throat> I, I identify as a political social worker, and that is relatively new. Not well, it's not uh, uh, a, a a big part of our profession, but it is definitely a part of our, our profession. When most people think of social workers as you know workers who work with individuals, families, and communities. And, and we do, but uh, there's a small growing number of us who realize that we not only have to work with the with those uh, systems, but we also need to be really engaged in our political in our political arena because we bring um, skills, knowledge, and values that are so desperately needed in that arena 
because we've seen how uh, you know Congress has polarized over over several decades, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. So hopefully, we if we can get more social workers in, in engaged in the political arena, we can do some things to uh, to make some changes. So I as I when I um, <clears throat> I was teaching at Howard University when Congressman Towns uh, offered me the job on, on the Hill. And so I, I, I felt that I was leaving social work to go into politics, right? I had not you know, connected the two really, but then I discovered that the skills and knowledge that I bring to, that, to, the, to the political arena were very useful in, in trying to do what I'm, what I'm doing. I'll admit that my um, time on the Hill was rather frustrating because uh, it was kind of polarized and, and, you know, you didn't really get a whole lot done. But um, what, ha what, what Congress teaches you, or at least I was in, on the House side, is that uh, most of the f work that gets done uh, is getting done in, 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 in local districts. So they come to Washington to... Um, serve on committees and to pass legislation, but they also, you know, are trying to get resources to do work in their, uh, in, in, in the local district. So that kind of changed my perspective because that, you know, I don't, in some sense you were saying, well, this is a, this is almost a total waste of time, you know, coming up here and, and, and debating on these issues, but not really getting anything done. But Congress is important. And so we need to have more social workers uh, engaged in, in Congress. Um, so what we do, uh, we, we focus on getting young social workers uh, excited about going into the uh, political arena. And we tell all social workers that they need to be engaged whether or not they wanna actually run for office, but we do want social workers to run for office. We want social workers to be Hill staffers uh, we want social workers in all those capacities, uh, but every social worker needs to know who represents them, and uh, <clears throat> and how they uh, uh, and to know what their what their representatives are actually doing for them. Now, money in politics is the is there's no bigger issue, Jeff, in terms of how we would how we will get our economy uh, our our democracy to function as it should, because with the money in politics, it, you know, it's not going to happen. Uh, there has, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. There have been, you know, research done, uh, like Martin Gillens and uh, Benjamin Page has done some significant research documenting how our voices are really not are muffled when it comes down, when it comes to the big money. Uh, the one thing I want to say, Jeff, is that, uh, we, I'm excited about being a part of this, uh, uh, and and I, um, I think that the I what we need to really do is to tell our story. I mean, there has been books with uh, Jay Myers, Dark Money tells the story about, but we we need to convince the American people. You know, we we need to sh actually show them how their lives can be different if uh, they follow this uh, this path and we enact this amendment. So I'm just delighted to be part of this and look forward to working with you as, as we move forward. Dr. Lewis, thank you so much. And um, I know your work in political social work, your teaching um, certainly took hold with uh, one of uh, your students and a leader in the social work space, Dr. Jessica Hare. Uh, who has uh, committed her work now from social work, still doing social work, but doing it at American Promise. Um, and I want to bring Dr. Jessica into the conversation. Just before I do, I, I want to give uh, people listening a little bit of um, context for this. Dr. You know, we've talked a lot about Congress. Um, Dr. Lewis just talked about some of the frustrations in Congress. Um, you know, we all, I think, are realistic about what Congress can do and what it's not capable of doing anymore. And so much of American promise work actually happens in our communities, in the states. Congress is going to vote for this amendment when we, the people, make that the only way you're going to get reelected if you vote for the For Our Freedom Amendment. And there is an amazing support. I mean, it's 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 70 to 80 percent 
across the political spectrum. There's not much Americans agree on, but in terms of getting our voice back, getting money out of politics, uh, we are in agreement. And so now 22 states have formally taken action to advance this constitutional amendment. Hundreds of cities and towns, uh, volunteers are getting candidate pledges, they're signing petitions, they're writing letters to the editor. So we're going to share more about how you can sign up to get involved in that. And one of our great leaders who empower people to do that and spread the message so more people get, can have that chance is Dr. Jessica Hare, who I introduced. And I will now turn it to you, Dr. Jessica, to share, just as Dr. Lewis and Sarah Butts did. Tell us about your work, your organization, and what brought you to this call. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Dr. Lewis and uh, Sarah, for joining us tonight. Um, I will say that I was introduced to political social work from Dr. Lewis, so I am forever thankful to him for that. During my doctoral program, um, I had not heard of political social work, and when he identified as a political social worker, it kind of got my, you know, my uh, my wheel spinning as to, well, what exactly is political you know, social work? Because, you know, oftentimes we are, we as in social workers are put into this bubble as to what we can do, which involves child protective services, adoptions, um, and, you know, but we have us have a very unique skill set where we can do it all. And, you know, we, we have social workers that are in Congress right now. And so, you know, my work here at America Promise, I do identify myself as a political social worker now, even though my job title is vice president. But one thing, you know, um, like I mentioned um, to Jeff before, is that, you know, our, you know, uh, America Promise, we are doing social work and social workers are advocates. We are change agents. And in order for us to really um, change the system and our policies, we have to be on the forefront. We have to be in the, you know, on the ground running with, you know, changing policies and, you know, really allowing us a space for our voices to be heard. So here at American Promise, you know, American Promise was really um, founded on freedom, you know, and each of us, you know, we are free to believe as we think, um, you know, we strive to grow, we take care of our families, we speak our minds, and we protect our way of life. Um, unfortunately, whenever decisions that affect our lives are determined by a powerful few, for example, Roe versus Wade, you know, that is a whole topic that social workers are advocating for. You know, our, our voices are taken away from us. We are no longer free. Um, so my role here at America Promise is really to bring more diversity and inclusion to the organization really to lift up the whole political um, social work arena, really to um, educate Americans on how they can get involved in our, you know, in our cause, you know, how to write letters to your editor, how to speak with your congressman and congresswoman, how to go on the Hill and, you know, have effective citizen lobby days. And uh, um, I always say that we can't win an amendment with old, rich, white people. We cannot. We, you know, we need to really understand how to speak in layman's terms um, and, you know, I will be honest and say that I'm a person, I hate politics. I have never liked politics, but my role as a social worker is to advocate for oppressed populations, advocate for people that look like me, advocate for communities, you know, public school systems that are, you know, suffering from the dominance that money has in politics. So I am grateful to Jeff for bringing me on, you know, to our organization. And, um, you know, we'll dive more into how you all can get involved with, you know, this movement. But I'll turn it back to you, Jeff. Thanks, Dr. Jessica. And, and let me let's open it up a bit. I want to um, I want to um, ask, I guess, in some ways it's personal, but it also goes right to the heart of political social work. But, um, you know, it's exhausting and hard to be a, a citizen in America right now. We've been it's been a tough several years in a lot of different ways. Um, and that's always true. It's, you know, it's not easy being in a diverse republic of 330 million people with lots of different views and backgrounds and, you know, objectives. And But we all know the last several years, for, for all kinds of different reasons, hitting us have been hard. Um, and so social work is hard work every day. And you're right in the thick of that. Uh, let me just give it to you three of you to just bat around or take take a, a turn at sharing this. When a social worker comes home and you got, you know, the, the kids or the all the different things going on on top of your clients, on top of all the, the work to do, 
how do you do political social work? How do you how do you volunteer to do even more uh, in those circumstances? What motivates? What inspires? What what renews that energy that brought you to social work in the first place? Um, share a little bit of your perspectives on that. What and 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 I'm sure for those listening because it's a big ask, and we at American Promise do not want to ask anybody to do anything that isn't constructive advancing the cause and actually inspiring and, and hopefully renewing, but give it to us straight as social workers. How do you, how do you add that on top of everything else? Um, I can start it off. I, I think I will say for me is that it's really about finding your passion and finding what's really dear and near to your heart issues that affect um, you as an everyday American citizen. And Social work is a, it's a career where it's a, a predominantly white um, career. And as a black woman, seeing how um, policies and procedures affect my community, as in the African-American population community, and the public school system, as you know, I was previously a school social worker. And, you know, just really keying in onto my passion for the profession, my passion for helping others, my passion for advocating for others, uh, advocating for people who can't advocate for themselves. That's truly what drove me to the profession as my parents were foster parents. So I have had several foster siblings um, who I still, um, you know, remain in contact with today. And, you know, just being able to connect on a deeper level with people in their communities and really you know, allowing them to see that I'm human just like you, I have issues just like you, but also helping them understand that they have a voice and educating themselves to understand what is happening in our democracy and our government. Um, you know, I'm a huge advocate for, you know, every day we live, like you, you can learn something new every single day. A day that you go without learning something new is a day wasted in my book. It, it, you know, it can be something small, it, you know, anything big. And for me, self-care is very important. Um, as Jeff mentioned, I love to exercise and anyone on this call who knows me knows that I am a former athlete. I still play sports. I, you know, I'm, I'm real huge on you know, taking care of myself mentally, spiritually, and physically. And that allows me you know, to continue to do the work that I'm doing within the social work arena. Okay. Sarah? Well, um, Dr. Jessica, the, the profession is um, um, is is privileged to have you and all of the new incoming social workers. I'm I'm, I'm encouraged by by the data that says that our our profession is increasingly diverse. Um, we have a large proportion of first generation college graduates in our profession, um, both racial and socioeconomic diversity. Really, um, among our new social workers coming in. So that's an encouraging sign. And when I am um, meeting with congressional lawmakers, they'll ask me, how do you have such a diverse workforce? Why are young people coming into your profession? And I, I believe that um, it's not because of recruitment or retention efforts, it's because we care, because we have a deep calling for this work. Many of us have lived experiences. And so to me, all social work is political social work. We all have an obligation to kind of um, advance the, the interest of our clients and society. And our, our code actually calls us to do that, to weigh in on social policies that deserve, that uh, discriminate. And so you see that social workers consistently are advocating when there's injustice. Uh, we wanna end racism. We wanna end on, um, we, we wanna address the LGBTQ um, uh, rights. We want to make sure that we all have voting rights, that our democracy is strong, that the people are not suffering. So um, I'm a proud macro social worker that that's those subset of our profession that um, was trained in, in clinical work, but also in management and policy practice. And so there's also a whole subset of us that this is our career path and, and our practice every day. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Dr. Lewis, what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, Political social work in a challenging environment. Um, what what works? How do social workers do it? How do we all keep doing it as every citizen needs to be called to do? What are you thinking? 
I think you're muted, sir. So I, I actually came to social work at a, at a, at a later stage of my life. I, um, I, I'm a preacher's kid. So I grew up, my father was a pastor. So I grew up in the church and a lot of my work as a younger, younger person, a young adult was uh, doing some of the same work in, 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 in the church. But uh, when I decided, uh, I won't tell you my entire story because we don't have that much time, but when I decided to go back to school and finish my degree, and I, had a, I was really at a crossroads of, crossroads of deciding whether to go to seminary, seminary, and then I was convinced that social work would be a better venue. So now that I am, a, I've been a social worker for a while. Uh, <clears throat> it is, a, it's a, it's a heavy load, uh, Jeff. I mean, in order to be able to do this work, I really have to stay abreast of what's going on in the world, uh, policies, uh, injustices. I know more, more than I want to know about economic inequality, but it's a very important issue that sometimes doesn't get the attention that it needs and it's it is also one of the reasons why we have uh this uh so much money in politics because of of the way our uh uh economy is structured and i'll and i'll be honest for, for the last couple of years with uh during this pandemic when i spent a lot of time alone um you know it, it's weighed on me and i have but, I, you know, you have to take care. One of the things we do as social workers is self-care. We know the importance of, I, I meditate, I exercise, and I, you know, I, and, and, and I have to tear myself away from reading the, the, the New York Times and the, watching Bloomberg and reading The Economist and all these other things that, you know, I, I would do. So, yeah, it's, but, you know, one of the things, you know, growing up as a PK, they, we were always told to whom much is given, much is required. So I feel an obligation to stay in here and do as much as I can while I can. Amen. <laughs> and to translate, PK is preacher's kid, folks, right there. And, uh, and, and we are glad you uh, answered the call here, Dr. Lewis. Uh, thank you. Um, there's, there's, I want to run off some questions in the chat. Some of them are related, um, and I think we've started to talk about it. How do we ensure political social work remains in the forefront, not just during the election cycles? I think we're talking a bit about how do you sustain that over time? And it's very a topic very near and dear to our heart at American Promise. You don't bite off a constitutional amendment, which take year, takes years, and we're five years into a 10-year game plan, and it's going really well. But to be able be able to sustain over time and not just election time and then get exhausted. That's a real important question. So uh, just think about that for a second while I, I give you a couple more and then you can sort of address them how you see fit. Um, there's a, a, a question of, of someone um, who um, and uh, who's thinking about how you have, you're interested in policy, you're interested in impact like that, but not sure which route to go. Um, you have some advice on that, uh, bring that in. Um, I will ask um, our team at American Promise, while we're thinking about these questions and we'll soon hear some answers from our distinguished panel, uh, let's get the social work statement of principle into the chat. Um, it's a really exciting initiative Dr. Jessica's leading to give a place for social workers who wanna sustain over this time, who wanna do it in community, we want to get away from the sort of partisan craziness of the day to work together for a long haul constitutional solution that lasts for generations. Um, sign up on that. And Dr. Jessica will follow up. And again, we won't waste your time. You'll, you'll be able to learn more and decide um, if you want to get involved. But sign that statement of principle. It's a way of showing we're standing together for each other and for the country. Um, so policy interests thoughts on how to do how do you sustain political social work over over time not just at election cycles and uh and and then there's um i'll just share um some nice comments about 
the inspiration that you all bring. So if you have inspiration for others uh, that sustains, let's hear about that. So anybody want to take any of those first? Um, sure, I can. Um, I, you know, of course, because I work for American Promise, I'm going to say that please visit our website, AmericanPromise.net, to begin your uh, volunteer work with political social work. <laughs> Join me <laughs> as I build out a political social workers network. Um, so sustainment, I think it 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 really bo- boils down to social workers like myself, Sarah, Dr. Lewis, continuing to bring awareness to this, you know, this uh, area of um, social work. Um, again, like I said, I had never heard of so- about political social work until I was in Dr. Lewis's um, class. And personally, I think that's a little sad um, because again, you know, social workers, we can do it all. And so in order to, you know, to bring more social workers to the forefront, we have to talk about it more. Um, you know, whether that calls for um, us submitting proposals to uh, different conferences, to really, you know, speak about, um, you know, this topic, um, you know, going to different colleges of uh, social work and, you know, being guest speakers with their students, talking about political social work, you know, really, um, you know, finding other organizations like American Promise, like CRISP, you know, that are, you know, really advocating for political social work and, you know, finding different avenues where, you know, you can get involved in, you know, this, uh, uh, this area. Um, and so again, you know, because I work for American Promise, I, you know, I really challenge social workers to really visit our website and connect with me so that, you know, you can assist me with building out this whole social work, uh, political social work arena and, you know, tackling this issue of money and politics. <clears throat> Great. Thanks, Dr. Jessica. Sarah, are you reaching for the unmute button? Yeah, so I'll, I'll just say that um, there are so many opportunities. Well, first, Um, There are social workers in Washington, D.C. and across the country that are leading in policy practice work. A lot of the major coalitions, social justice coalitions, are headed up or um, by social workers or social workers participate on their boards. Um, So sometimes their title is not social worker, but there are many social work leaders. So I encourage all of us to use our MSW and our signature blocks because that lets folks know that we are proud social workers. And that's true even if you have a PhD in social work, which there's no way to distinguish that unless you put your other degrees there. Um, NESW recently published a paper with the University of Michigan that talks about the White House as a field placement. And in social work education, we have to do at least two years of what we call field practicum. So any interested students in political social work or policy practice should try to secure an internship in a policy space. And that could happen in the local, state, or national level. Um, Nonprofits, for-profits, there's tons of different types of opportunities. And there's also many fellowships. And so that paper that I mentioned, has a, has a number of fellowships in the paper. And, and not to be discouraged, if you have to volunteer to start out, it's worth volunteering. It, it takes a little bit of an effort to get into policy practice, but once you do, you can have a whole career in this in this space. Sarah, let me ask you a quick follow-up from the chat. Someone new um, to the, the profession asking, how do I get involved in political social work at the local level? Is there a, a, a local action someone can take? Sure. Well, you can always connect with your local NESW chapter. That's a start. Uh, You can contact others in the policy. You know, we cover so many different policy issues that, for example, there's usually organizing around um, um, homelessness, as Charles said, economic inequality, um, poverty work at the local level, mental health and behavioral health access, um, organizations like Healthcare for the Homeless as an example. So you gotta kind of figure out what your interest is and then you can either begin to try to work there or to volunteer to get connected. Fantastic. And your professors can be a resource you all. Your, your professors in the colleges have a lot of, of context with both their alumni and, and within their professional networks. Yeah, great. Um, I'm going to we're going to hear a little bit later from Mike Moneta, our vice president of volunteer and advocacy. And also, um, if you want to get involved at the local level and there's a comment. Thank you, Ohio, saying Ohio needs American promise. It sounds like uh, how can I get involved? So, Mike, if you would put the volunteer uh, link into the chat as well. And and Mike will follow up directly if you want to get involved in the states at the local level. Um, 
Dr. Lewis, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, well, one of the things we do is uh, we do briefings uh, periodically, uh, you know, particularly focusing on something that's uh, pertinent in the news. Uh, after the George Floyd um, murder, we team with uh, NASW to talk about uh, social workers becoming more engaged in responding to you know, uh, incidents that, that are not enforcement incidents, incidents that may involve domestic violence. And, and we talked, we had a briefing on how that might be done. Uh, in 2018, uh, in, in, uh, in response to uh, Nancy McLean's book, Democracy in Chains, we raised the question, can social work help save democracy? And out of that has come what we're called, what is called the Social Work Democracy Project. It's a 501c3, and we're going to be doing uh, quite a few things uh, in the coming coming months. While one of the things we're going to be doing, you can look for, is we're going to have a social work democracy book club, where we're going to, you know, read and discuss, you know, per, you know re, uh, relevant books. Uh, I'm working on a podcast, hopefully to launch sometime in the fall. So yeah, we you know uh, you know we go, we'll be doing a briefing uh, in September on uh, the Indian Indian Wealth Indian Indian Child Welfare Act uh, because the Supreme Court is going to be taking a look at that, and we want everybody to be aware of what those issues are. Yeah, terrific. And I see the comments. Some a lot of new folks, both to social work, some students, and. Some a lot of midlife, uh, you know, someone practicing law who then uh, heard the call and got a MSW and is now going in social work, uh, and people of uh, uh, all, all 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 of our generations in America right now. Um, there's even one saying, "What about the baby boomers?" I I, I like that one. Thank you. Uh, so there is room for everyone um, to get involved. I think in this. In, in both in social work and many, many issues that NASW and Chris is working on and including this uh, effort with American Promise and our constitutional amendment and our democracy as, as Dr. Lewis just described. Um, so um, I, I do want to um, ask about um, a bit more in the particular nature of the problem. There are so many crises that social workers are dealing with. Um, there's a question about mental health and the um, need for more mental health professionals. There's the, the school situation, of course, so hard for so many parents and students and uh, poverty and just so much. Um, how do you see, and you've all alluded it to it many, a few times, but I wanna just, could you unpack how you see the moneyed influence in our political life at the state, federal, we're even seeing super PACs in local elections now. I was in Green Bay, Wisconsin last week, and they had a nonpartisan city council race where, you know, one of the candidates said, I'm nonpartisan. I don't want any money. And I just want to get a traffic light at this intersection. <laughs> it's a little bit dangerous. And some other like local, and he had super PAC spending money against him from out of state and nobody knew where the money was coming from. So we're now at the point where money is like woven in to virtually every community in the country where powerful people with money are deciding things to the exclusion of the voice of the people. How does that look on the ground to social workers in the communities trying to solve problems? Do you have any thoughts on that and what you see with the money influence? Who wants to take that one? So I'll, I'll, I'll say a little bit about that. You know, obviously money skews the whole political process. But one of the things that really struck me when I was working on the Hill is that the amount of time that has to be devoted to raising money. You know, so, you know, elected officials, whether in, they're, they're in Congress or they're in the state government or local, they have to, they have to devote enormous amount of time, you know, figure how raising money and that takes away time that they need to spend focusing on the uh the issues that that people want and i and i think it also it also 
disconnects them from people because they're always when you know when they're talking to people they're talking about money instead of talking to them about uh you know what they what the uh their vision for helping to improve their lives i mean they need to spend as much time talking about that and and, and thinking about that as they do but the money is you got to get you got to raise the money yeah I just want to support what Charles is, is saying and, and I'm, it's very frustrating. I, the profession has recommendations on how we can improve society and key barriers are political will and the resources, the interdisciplinary collaboration. We need our leaders to help to convene us so that we can help to make progress as a society for the long term, not just for the short term. So, you know, we have this a number of issues that are facing us. And I think that generally um, social workers and the clients that we serve are very frustrated. Even when we um, get bills introduced in Congress, for example, that will help us to make progress, it's very hard to get sufficient support and to get them passed. Some legislation takes 10 to 15 years. And every time you have to get it reintroduced, it costs a lot more money. So we're not talking about it, but it takes lobbyists to introduce bills and to help to draft that legislation and to help with the process. And then every Congress, we start over at zero and we've got to do it all over again. Yeah. Um, Dr. Jessica, I, I know you want to weigh in too. Let me just give you a related question. So when you're talking about that impact of money, um, I know this one might be close to your heart too. Uh, a question about how does political social work affect the lives of everyday Americans, not just those impoverished or disadvantaged? And I think in some ways this money question actually goes to that because it impacts everybody at every level and every walk of life. Um, so Dr. Jessica, money on the ground in communities, how it does and, 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 and how does political social work actually serve all Americans? Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely want to say that, so our social work field, um, our career path, it's not, it's a career path for everyone, all, all citizens, all American citizens. Um, you know, we, we have a set of core values that, you know, we are deeply rooted into, into our NASW code of ethics, and it involves service, social justice, dignity and worth of a person, um, integrity, competence, and importance of human relationships. Um, and so that is just that, you know, that's not only for, you know, people that are in, um, that are in disadvantaged or improvised backgrounds, it's for everyone. And money in politics affects everyone, um, you know, all the way down, you know, from, from those that are in those communities, all the way up to people that are not in those communities. And so we have to really understand what the issues are at hand, how the money in politics, you know, really affects our community as a whole, you know, all Americans. And we really have to just kind of hit the ground running with advocacy. Everything in social work, I feel, goes back, goes back to being an advocate, advocating for all populations, not just certain populations, but all populations. Yeah. All right. I'm going to get some more questions in. Um, we have just a few more minutes and then we're going to have Mike Mineta um, from our, uh, our Vice President of Advocacy and Volunteers. Um, and please see the NASW links going into the chat as well. Um, the CRISP links going into the chat, the American Promise links going into the chat. Um, there's no shortage of, uh, as Dr. Jessica said, learn something new every day. And, uh, and, and, and move ahead every day. Um, that is, in my view, and what we've seen at American Promise across the country, the antidote to despair, to discouragement, to frustration, to all the uh, understandable emotions that we get um, every day in the news um, is, is uniting, connecting in community, um, even if it has to be on Zoom sometimes, um, to do good work together. So um, I want to encourage our panelists to jump in with questions for each other, mm -hmm. if you have any. Uh, and then and then this one to you to bat around, which is um, specifically what 
talking about the money problem now and, and the for, for our freedom constitutional amendment. It's a big, big deal. We're going to need two thirds vote of Congress. We're going to need 38 state legislatures, that's three quarters of the states to ratify it. Um, we have one big advantage. The American people are with us across the divides. Um, the only way they can stop this is to keep us divided uh, and fighting each other. So that's our strategy to, to prevent them. But um, as I said at the top of the show, this is how women won the right to vote. It's how slavery was ended after the Civil War and, and the right to vote guaranteed regardless of, of race. It was how um, young people got a political voice, constitutional amendments. And of course they don't, it's not one and done. You get the amendment done and you can go home and rest. This is the, the uh, as, as I'm, I'm, I'm sure Dr. Lewis's father and other preachers would tell us the, 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 the work goes on every day and you have to keep walking in that way every day. Um, but um, what can social workers do to sustain this constitutional amendment effort? How how uh, how does it get integrated with a social work practice um, in in community? And it's a little bit like the larger question about political social work. But let's give a big invitation to our attendees here to sign up and and uh, and get to work. Well, one thing we we got to get people talking about it. You know, if if you know, we got to make people aware of the issue and aware of this this initiative. I, to be honest, Jeff, I, I was not until, you know, until I, uh, you know, found out about it through American Promise. And, and it is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an exciting potential, has exciting potential. Uh, things like ranked choice voting has, ex, you know, exciting potential. But unless people are talking about it, unless they're aware, made aware of it, you know, it, it'll go on unnoticed uh, under the radar screen. So we got to do something to raise the visibility of this effort. It's very true, very true. And that's part of our big work. Um, Dr. Jessica, you are trying to raise um, the um, visibility of this work with your outreach, that's the job. And one of the things you've done is the social work initiative and i just put into the chat for everyone how social workers can actually sign on um support your leadership of that and support each other in doing this tell us a little bit more about about that yeah sure um so i i first want to say that social work that this is a tough field um to be in and while at the social work conference this past week <clears throat> Sarah share, shared a very excellent quote with us that you know I wrote down and it said, right is right, even if everyone is against it, and wrong is wrong, even if everyone is for it. And that quote is from William Penn that Sarah shared with us at the conference. And as social workers, we have to adopt that mindset because oftentimes, you know, we people will not agree with what we're doing and what we're standing against and standing up for and what we're advocating for. But like the quote said, right is right, even if everyone is against it. We have to stand true to who we are, stand true to our profession, stand true to our code of ethics. That is what makes a great social worker. Um, and, you know, as you mentioned, Jeff, you know, I'm uplifting this cause here at American Promise. And, um, you know, and I understand that not everyone will particularly want to get involved with the money and politics aspect of political social work. This is just one avenue of, you know, that, you know, of a way that, you know, you can get involved in political social work. There are several other ways that you can get involved. And I, again, I always challenge people to really um, key into that and really do your research and figure out what is dear and near to your heart and how you can get involved with that particular sector. Fantastic, Dr. Jessica, thanks. And we're gonna give the last word of this segment and then bring in Mike Moneta to join us to Sarah Butts with the national leader of social workers in many instances, the National Association of Social Workers. So Sarah. So I think what, one way, one message to convey to social workers right now is that we need to come together. 
We need the full strength of the profession, the 700,000 plus of us, plus our students, plus prospective social workers, plus our parents and our families, uh, we, our kids. We need to come together around how can we have impact how can we address these vaccine social problems and kind of try to deal with some of the infighting with our profession? We, I talked a little bit earlier about how the breadth and depth of our portfolio of, of the things that we advocate for. This is an area where getting money out of politics um, helps us to remove barriers, roadblocks to progress. And so this is something that I think we could have a united front around and I really commend um, you all for kind of spearheading this and helping to, to um, reach social workers with this message. Outstanding, Sarah. Thank you. And, and, and uh, thanks to all of our panelists. Uh, Mike, Moneta, come on in and join us for the last few minutes. Tell us what's going on with volunteers at American Promise, uh, what's been happening around the country, and what folks on the call can do as a next step. All right, can you hear me? It says I can't start my video for some reason. So the host needs to check that, I guess. I'm not sure why. All right, well, you fire away. We see your name and we hear your voice. Yeah, like, hey, there. everyone. <laughs> we wish we could see you, but uh, let us know what's going on. Yes, we will. Oh, here we go. Already fixed. Hey, there everyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, great call tonight. Uh, excellent job putting that together, Dr. Jessica. I just want to say that. Sarah, excellent insight. Dr. Charles, I, I appreciate it uh, listening to you. And um, by the way, I also want to say that we've had volunteers rolling in. We'd love to see that. Uh, I think we've had eight or nine just in the last few minutes. Deborah, Janice, Edmund, Stephanie, Ashley, Antoinetta, Heidi, Takima. I mean, it's uh, that's what we're looking for here. So, uh, yeah, I am vice president of volunteer advocacy and training here at American Promise. And just want to give you a few highlights happening uh, around the country because there is there's a lot happening here. And this is you know, what we're doing here is big, as Jeff said, it's, you know, there, it's a big problem that we're trying to solve and it requires a big solution. And, you know, at American Promise, you have an opportunity to be part of a really historic movement here to amend the United States Constitution to deal with this, uh, you know, this really vital issue, this uh, root cause of so much that is ailing our country right now. So if you do want to volunteer, I'm going to drop the link one more time. So it's in there. Uh, please do. And I'm going to be reaching out to you personally within the next uh, I'm not going to say a couple hours because it's almost eight o'clock here in the East Coast where I am, but tomorrow for sure. And uh, let you know exactly how you can get involved. Uh, but just a few highlights from around the country. We've got Virginia, uh, our fearless leader there, Nancy Morgan, uh, just gave me some updates today. They organized uh, a tabling event at the Women's Summit uh, in Virginia just two days ago on Saturday, where they got pledges from legislators, candidates. They asked groups to sign a letter promoting campaign finance reform. Uh, and they got nearly 200 people uh, to take action that day. So amazing work there. We've got uh, Ken Chestick out in Wyoming. Another update just this month, the, a, a Gillette City Council unanimously, unanimously adopted a resolution urging Congress to propose to the states a U.S. constitutional amendment uh, that would allow the state legislatures in Congress to distinguish between human and non-human entities with regard to campaign finance reform. Uh, that's a huge deal. Um, Maine, we had an absolutely extraordinary day on election day just a couple of weeks ago. That was led by our uh, fearless field organizer, Chris Kayer. The goal was 10,000 signatures for a ballot initiative, and they got 12,500 in just one day. So truly an amazing day there in Maine, and uh, the team just keeps continuing to work there. Wisconsin, uh, super team of volunteers. Judy Nagel, Howard Hauser, Alex Renard, Gail Garrity Reed, Michael Poradek, uh, just absolutely killing it there in Wisconsin. And actually, I'm going to post an article that Jeff mentioned earlier in the chat too about dark money, outside money affecting um, one of the people I just mentioned. Actually, uh, it's a, it's an incredible uh, article and a really good example of what happens when money comes in from the outside. It's, it involves Michael Poradek, who I just mentioned, who uh, is an American Promise volunteer now. And um, they basically distorted who he actually is. And he ended up losing that election by just a little bit when he actually should have won it. So um, just a, you know, just one example out of obviously thousands across the country. Uh, and then Pennsylvania, Dave Black, who's just an, a maniac running around getting business support all over the state. Um, just uh, an outstanding volunteer. We've got Ted Napke in Ohio, who just did presentations to five rotary clubs and one retirement community just in the past couple months. 
And then lastly, I just want to do a quick shout out to some of the leaders that are really keeping this going here, which is Mary Henselder Kimmel. It's one of the first times I've said it out loud, so I hope I did it justice. Mary in New Jersey. Um, Marie, sorry, in New Jersey. Vicki Barnes in Minnesota. Hank Myers in Michigan. Ann Drum in Texas. Judy Butler in Delaware. Loya Nittmeyer in California. And some others on the New Jersey team, Heather Santos, Monica Rodriguez, and Joan Diver. And um, they're all just doing absolutely outstanding work. I've only been here for a few months, but they've been super welcoming and they're really keeping this thing going. And we really got some exciting stuff coming up on the volunteer front. And then lastly, one upcoming event, candidate pledge training coming up on July 14th. Uh, it's actually every Thursday, every second Thursday of the month, we give you, uh, we provide you with training um, on that specific uh, task. So that's hey, it, Mike. it's a lot. Mike, yeah. let me ask you, would you put the candidate training sign up? I mean, candidate pledge training sign up into the chat. And yes. I just wanna let folks know, and a lot of those folks who were mentioned who are doing super volunteer work are on the call. Thank you to all of them. If you're um, a social worker coming to this for the first time, the social work uh, statement of principle that Dr. Jessica's leading is a good place to sign up. Um, the candidate pledge is a nonpartisan, cross-partisan thing. We don't care if you're running for school committee or president. We want you to tell the American people where you stand on the 4-Hour Freedom Amendment. Are you going to help get money out of politics or are you going to just continue to let the system get corrupted by money and politics? So that's a great place if you want to get involved in specifically asking candidates and working with others who are going to put candidates on the spot. We'll have hundreds and hundreds of candidates signed on to the American Promise Statement uh, or uh, candidate pledge. So we are at the top of the hour. Um, I want to sign off. Uh, with a big, big thank you to all of you for joining us. The, the chat and the uh, questions are wonderful. Um, some people are asking about, will this be recorded? Some people want to show it to their classrooms. Um, and the answer is yes. And uh, thanks to our, our, our panelists, we're going to get a, a blog and the links to this out. So you'll have something to share. Um, so watch for that from CRISP, the National Association of Social Workers, American Promise, Big thanks to Sarah Butts, Dr. Charles Lewis, Dr. Jessica Hare, and all of you social workers out there inspiring us and in many ways holding us uh, together in our communities and, and moving forward. Um, thanks to all of you. Thanks to the panel. Thanks to Mike Mineta. And we will see you next month. And we will see you uh, out there doing political social work for the future and the good of our people. Have a good night, everybody.